Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy film, The Fall of the American Empire. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. At the Delhi Tech restaurant, our protagonist Pierre Paul chats with a girl, explaining how hard it is to be clever, because the stupid don't think about the consequences and start believing in things they didn't want to believe in before. The girl talks about her dream. She wants to take her son on a trip, but so far the dream is unfulfilled due to financial problems. She asks him why in the year and a half of their relationship he has never once told her that he loves her, to which Pierre replies that he cannot say what neither one side or the other understands. They break up and the girl leaves, telling Pierre that she feels sorry for him because he will be alone forever. Two guys in a solid car drive up to a car with an electric lock. One of them photographs the car's serial number and stands nearby to create a fake key for the car. They open the car and drive away. While Pierre is talking to the newspaper clerk, the two guys who stole the car break into the shop and collect a huge amount of money in a bag. A Mustang with a bald man at the wheel pulls up to the shop. Suspecting something is wrong he pulls up to the back door, taking a machine gun. He enters and quietly sneaks around the building. Pierre works as a courier and arrives to deliver a parcel. When he sees the bandits through the blinds he bursts into the room and one of them throws his gun and the other one shoots him in the chest but he too is hit by a couple of bullets in return. One runs away and the man chases after him. On his way out he hits him in the buttock. He drops the bag and runs away and the man with the machine gun is shot in the back by the second guy and finishes him off, but he manages to turn around and hit him. When he comes out on the street he drops dead. Seeing the money in the bag Pierre grabs both bags and throws them into the car and the cops arrive and stop him. The surviving bandit successfully makes it to the car and drives off. While Pierre is being questioned by the police, one of the detectives looks into Pierre's van but a car pulls up diverts her attention and Pierre almost screws up. The owner arrives and is told he has lost his head of security and that the safe is empty. The police promise to start looking for it. Pierre brings the bags of money home and the wounded guy apparently goes to a doctor who works in the black and asks him to cure him and then he gives the money back. Pierre hides some of the money at home and takes the rest to mini warehouses and goes to pour soup for the homeless. In the evening Pierre has a drink with a homeless friend who talks about his dream of a small house. He hears on TV how one of the gangster's brain is released. He is in jail for gangsterism and selling contraband. Pierre guesses that maybe this is his chance. After Brain leaves the prison grounds, Pierre waits for him. He says he needs a financial consultant and Brain sees that the car is not his, puts it down to a joke and leaves but Pierre catches up with Brain at the bus stop and gives him a card with his number saying he has too much money. The police arrive at the wounded gangster's mother's house and ask if she has seen her son in recent days, to which she replies no. They give her a business card and ask her to give it to her son if she sees him. As the cops approach the car, we see the mother give the card to her son. At night, Pierre is poking around on adult websites and writing a quote from one of the girl's books to the post office. He finally meets Brain and while Pierre mumbles again about the amount of money, Brain says he needs all the information and clear answers and leaves. The next day a hot hottie arrives at Pierre's house. She introduces her security guard and shows the panic button. At the house Pierre asks why she chose Aspasia. She says she was the first of the whores and Pierre adds that she was Socrates' friend. Pierre collects an envelope of money to put in Aspasia's drawer, supposedly for charity. In the kitchen, Pierre is worried and Aspasia supposedly tries to calm him down. She asks him to bring his tie, and when he steps away, she checks how much money is in the shelf. She ties his hands with the tie and goes about her business, but in the middle of the most intimate moment, a security guard calls her and tells her the cops are coming. She runs off and the cops recognize her from a previous case. They ask where Pierre got the money for a girl who costs like two months salary for a courier. He answers that they are friends, and the woman asks if friends leave their panties as a pledge of friendship. They warn Pierre that he is involved in a very dangerous business. The wounded kid is shoved into a car and driven away. Police arrive at the delivery guy's receptionist. They find out Pierre had been at the shop for about three hours and then went home, but he didn't open the back door, so he didn't take anything voluminous out. The kid's mom calls the cops and says her son went missing yesterday afternoon. Pierre arrives at Brains. He guesses that the money is from a western gang. 
in that it can't be spent. They arrive at the warehouses. Their brain also learns from Pierre that he has already spent the money on a girl he introduced to the cops as a friend. Brain is disgusted with Pierre. The kid gets his hands twisted off at the hoist for not answering where the money is. In the street, a mobster tells the owner of the safe that he is responsible for the money and that the kid really doesn't know where the... Pierre tells her that ever since she has been with him, she is all he thinks about. The agents overhear all their conversations as they talk about life. They meet at dawn on the roof of a high-rise and Pierre tries to find out her real name but she replies that it is still impossible. They head for the warehouses where the bags are not found. A spacier gets a call on her phone and she is about to leave when the cops immediately show up and call her Camila Lafontaine. Outside, the police show Pierre what happened to that guy at the car junkyard and show him by example how that guy was tortured. Pierre and Camila go to Brain's house. At the entrance Camila says he is unlikely to be there yet. As soon as Pierre opens the door he pounces on Brain and he breaks him on the bed and shows him his money. He tells Pierre that he heard from his friends at the police that they are being followed and decided to take the money. He asks Pierre to make up an alibi for the bags. They all get acquainted and even Brain's daughter Shinji. Brain tells them they won't be on constant surveillance because it's too expensive, but it's better to look back now. The girl cop finds out from the hospital guy that the shop owner hired to have his shop robbed because he's not getting paid enough by the mafia. He was so keen to get all the money for himself. Camila, Pierre, and Brain bury the treasure next to Brain's and Brain simultaneously tells Pierre to help that guy from the hospital because as soon as they get near him they are dead. The owner of the shop is asked to return the money but he doesn't know where he can get it. When he leaves the agents arrive and after a short talk he drives away. They offer him help but he refuses. Pierre comes to Camila and thinks he is the first man in her house, but she interrupts him and says he is the second, after her husband and throws the money on the table for today. She tells him he should throw it in a drawer. Brain comes to the lad and tells him that a Chinaman is coming for him and that he should go with him. He is saved by people who are too kind and the government always deceives us. Pierre goes to his ex-girlfriend and gives him an envelope with money for his son's trip. In a cafe they discuss that they need a financier. Camila has connections right at the top of this pyramid scheme. They decide to send Pierre to meet the financier and he needs to convince him to work with them. Camille arrives at the office. She is met by Pierre and as soon as they enter the building, they are immediately followed by agents. While he is running around the offices looking for Camila and Pierre, they have already made arrangements with the financier to invest abroad illegally. As soon as they leave a cop walks in on the floor, he gets into the financier's office they don't ask anything and the cop says that people like this ruined his father and he went to police school instead of the maths department. After the night with Camila, agents are waiting for Pierre in the foyer. They question him about the man who went with him to the warehouse. Pierre comes up with an alibi that the bags contained clothes. And the man who went with him is Bill the homeless man who took the clothes without Pierre. He had a key. The woman asks to see the clothes in the way of Camille, but she asks for a search warrant and she says there isn't one yet. At the museum the financier talks to Brain and finds a tactic to get the money out of the country without taxation. A cop's informant arrives at the church, in the confessional room. He tells the cop that they have reached out to Brain through the daughter and asked to find him, and also to target Vlad, the shop owner, and put a reward on him. The cops come to Vlad and tell him that he is being hunted and offer protection, but he shows the amulet and believes in his protection, he doesn't need the cops' protection. In the park, they meet and discuss that the money will pass through the world and come to Switzerland, where they can spend it as they wish. The financier gives the data stick to Camila and says the guy is lucky to have Camila. At this time the cops take a picture of them. Pierre asks Brain to spend some money for a friend, but Brain refuses. Camila offers to lend him her money. At the bank, she opens a safe deposit box for him and tells him that she has many safe deposit boxes all over town with savings. She only trusts cash because the state can't control them. She asks Pierre to take as much as he wants. Brain negotiates with Pierre's ex. She says she'll find an office for a similar charity and she's in. The guy is already rehabilitating himself at the gym. Vlad gets killed outside the shop. The police realize they will be taking money out of the country, but they don't yet understand how. 
While Financier makes arrangements with his friends to spend the money around the world, the cops come to him and show him pictures of them together, but Financier again dodges all the answers. Brain and Camila dig up the money, Pierre is followed and brings the cop to the office, but while he's looking around the building for them, Brain and Camila bring in the money. The cop walks up to Pierre's office and says he wants to go to yoga, but Pierre says it's not here and he leaves. The cop arranges to search everyone except the financier. They provide a tax-free money transfer service, but add 15% of their own to their money to take it out and give it to them. The cops are given a warrant and ask for people, but all the police are at student rallies, so they have to wait two hours, while Pierre gives a bag of money to a woman who will have to transfer it. The cops are given men and they head to the site. They let the last customer go and Brain cleans the laptop and sends it to the container at which time the police are already outside the building. The last customer walks out and Pierre's ex takes the contain. At the golf club, Financet is approached by a girl and says she is from Aspasia and she is worried about him, asking her to find a replacement. In the evening, Financet arrives at his hotel room and a girl is waiting for him to replace Aspasia, but as soon as he gives her the envelope, agents appear and arrest him for seducing a minor. The next day, Pierre sees the agents again approach the help center, he approaches them and asks if they are idle, at least let them help him. The agent helps Pierre in the kitchen and Pierre talks about the rotten system, that you can't protect bosses and put workers away. The girl tells Camila that it's unusual to see her here, to which she replies that she can't explain, and there's nothing to say. They bring in the homeless man from the beginning of the film who has been dreaming of having a house of his own and Camilla gives him a flat she inherited from an uncle she hardly knows, he is shocked. Outside, he hugs Camilla and gives her a bracelet and asks Pierre to help on Sunday with a tour, Camilla will come too. At the end we are shown footage of homeless people urging them to help, as Pierre does throughout the film. Support the channel by subscribing, like and on notifications, because with it you will be the first to know about the video. Thank you for watching.